Imagine this. Humanity has turned Mars into a colonial paradise. Suddenly, one of the moons, Phobos, begins to careen towards the planet, spiraling closer and closer to the surface of Mars. A disaster movie comes to mind, Moonfall, when the Earth's moon is about to collapse onto the planet and destroy everything. How would future humanity react to such a catastrophe? Welcome to Fact Nominal, and today we'll be exploring the dark side of Mars's moons. Mars is a planet that's captured the attention of astronomers for decades. It's the only planet in our solar system besides Earth that's shown the potential to sustain life as we know it. Since 1971, with the landing of the Soviet Mars 3 space probe, man has been plotting and prepping the planet for people. The Viking One, the Curiosity, and the Perseverance are rovers that were sent there to investigate the current and previous habitability of the planet via biosignatures. But all of this could be for nothing, as there's a possible calamity waiting to happen on Mars. Imagine an entire moon falling on the surface of the red planet. But humanity hasn't given up yet. Lead scientist for the Mars Perseverance rover, Dr. Ken Farley, expands on the idea of finding life on Mars. And so it's important if life is there. It's important if life is not there. Because one of the really great, great questions at the discovery of all of these extrasolar planets that we've heard about over the last uh, about 10 years is how common is it for life to originate? Because if you if you build it, will life come? If there's an environment that is inhabitable, will life just spontaneously appear? In preparation for the arrival of humans, the latest rover's been equipped with items that may benefit them on Mars. Even a small helicopter with large air blades is on the rover. This drone-type helicopter is a test product to see if future explorers could use something like it to explore the planet, instead of having to traverse it themselves. The rover is also equipped with a device that converts atmospheric carbon dioxide into oxygen as a proof of concept regarding providing breathable air for future manned explorers. If this invention can create a viable source of O2, future scientists won't have to bring oxygen with them for breathing or for propulsion to get off the planet later. Instead, they'd be able to utilize a device like this on Mars and create oxygen right there. This would revolutionize space travel as we know it. With the 2021 landing of the Perseverance rover, NASA found exciting evidence supporting the potential for life. They found signs of ancient magma in the form of volcanic rocks. They also found clues that there was once abundant water in the form of rivers, deltas, and lakes located in the Jezero Crater. Scientists are investigating rocky material for microbial biosignatures. Dr. Foley explains how the signatures are formed. So we're looking at things that microbes leave behind. And one of the most prominent things that they leave behind is a texture in the rocks, which is produced when the microbes form a mat at the boundary between the water in the lake and the mud at the bottom of the lake. They form a film on the mud. And then that film gets buried and another film goes on it. It gets buried and another film goes on it. And so we're gonna be looking for evidence of that type of layers of microbes. This process is very similar to how we look in different layers of soil on Earth for dinosaur fossils, but on a micro level. The rover has also isolated organic molecules that are preserved in the rocks and dust on the surface of Mars in tubes and are leaving them to be collected at a later date. These scientific discoveries testify to the environment of Mars billions of years ago. Long ago, more than about three and a half billion years ago, the surface was very different. It was warmer and wetter, and there was uh, flowing water on the surface. There would have been lakes and rivers, and we can see the geologic deposits from that time period today. With NASA planning its first manned mission to Mars as early as 2030, or 2029 if you're Elon Musk, there's particular interest in the fate of this planet and its fiendish moon. 
Though we're exploring and dreaming of colonizing it, can we really ignore all the warnings that one of Mars's moons is still locked in a death spiral with the planet? It's predicted to make an impact like something straight out of a science fiction movie. But it's anything but fiction. It is an inevitability. Mars' moons are named after the twin children of the Greek god Ares. Phobos, fear and panic, and Deimos, terror and dread. The twins had their Hollywood debut personified by pain and panic in Disney's Hercules. Though often comedic relief in the film, in reality, the two truly are unique. Both moons are very small. Phobos has a radius of 7 miles and has the same surface area as Luxembourg. It's also 157 times smaller than our moon. Little brother Deimos has a radius of 3.85 miles, which is smaller than Mount Everest. Being so petite, they don't have a strong gravitational pull and thus can't maintain or achieve a spherical form and hence are shaped like potatoes. The most commonly held belief is that they were once part of Jupiter's asteroid belt, but were pushed out by its gravitational force, resulting in them finding a home around Mars. Phobos has always been the oddball in the family. Discovered with its brother in 1877 by American astronomer Asaph Hall, it's orbiting closer to its home planet than any other natural satellite in our entire solar system. Very fast-moving and eager to maintain an ominous presence, Phobos circles Mars two times a day instead of once like our moon. Living up to its name, inciting fear and panic, Phobos is going to collide with Mars if it continues on its perspective path. Day by day, it's creeping closer to its prophesied demise at a speed of 0.72 inches per year, or 6 feet every 100 years. It's up for debate about what will happen to Phobos as it approaches Mars. One camp believes that perhaps it will break apart prior to impact, resulting in a ring of debris circling Mars. Alternatively, others believe that it could collide with the planet. As it's similar in size to the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, the damage would be cataclysmic. Regardless of what happens to Phobos, our little tater tot time bomb would have a catastrophic impact on Mars. None of this is new information to NASA. They've known about the death spiral for years, but with the recent eclipse captured by NASA's Perseverance rover, we're again reminded of Phobos' future fate. Even though it's far off into the future, the fate of the moon seems to be written. Phobos' moon brother Deimos has a fate that's closer to that of our own moon. Destined to be pulled further away from Mars, Deimos is one day going to drift off into space. Our own moon orbits us today at 477,213 miles away and is our only natural satellite. Though we've always appreciated the beauty and impact the moon has on our night sky, it seems the moon doesn't return our affections. It's currently ghosting us at a cruel pace of one and a half inches per year, which is the same rate at which our fingernails grow. Because of this, scientists predict that in approximately 600 million years, the Earth and all its inhabitants will experience the last solar eclipse as the moon moves away into space. With this reality in mind, scientists have extensively studied what would happen to the Earth if and when it's no longer influenced by the moon. The first noticeable change would be that our night sky would become very dark is the moon is what casts light on our planet when the sun is resting. Without it, we would be relying exclusively on stars or the light we create here on Earth. Another thing that would directly impact our planet would be the absence of tidal motion due to the lack of a moon. The gravitational pull between the moon and our planet, or tidal force, causes water to bulge on the side that's closest to the moon, making the Earth kind of look like an egg. This results in our oceans following a rhythmic pulse as the moon orbits Earth, with the oceans and seas rising and falling with it. Alternatively, as the moon walks away from us and gets far enough away that it's no longer linked to our orbit, 
our Earth's tides will be approximately one-third of what they are today. This is because just the Sun will be pulling on the Earth, and its pull is much weaker as it's so far away. Another impact would be on our calendar. Our days would speed by as there'd no longer be any gravitational pull between the Earth and the Moon to slow down our spin. The 24-hour days we're used to would be shortened to 6 to 12 hours instead. Our year would be made up of over a thousand shorter days instead of our handy normal 365. If the fates changed and the moon rocketed towards Earth like Phobos is heading towards Mars, we would experience a different situation entirely. Instead of stillness, there would be a huge surge in our oceans. This is because, as Dr. Tony Cook of the Aberyst with University states, if the moon was even half the distance away from the Earth, the tides would be eight times stronger than they are at present. There would be massive tides, tons of coastal flooding, tsunamis, and considerable volcanic activity. We can expect something similar on Mars when Phobos makes its descent. We will see geographic volatility, even though it's much smaller in size and Mars has no oceans. The act of bringing the moon closer to Earth would stir up a lot of activity that would challenge humanity's ability to survive on Earth. You should expect that similar challenges would be faced by a Mars civilization with the Phobos situation. But here's the good news. Even though the collapse of Phobos is imminent, we have almost an eternity to prepare for it, give or take 50 million years. Yes, Phobos isn't in any hurry, and maybe even if we colonize Mars, we would already be looking for a new home by then. Exploring the dark recesses of the solar system allows us to excitedly look beyond our own borders to a future of space exploration. As we gaze into the future, we find potential problems that the human race will have to deal with, and we come to realize they're a lot closer to home. After spending some time with the moons of our Mars, we learn a lot about how even the smallest potato of a moon can have a huge impact on the platter of the planetary system. When do you think humans will take their first steps on Mars? Tell us in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching Phenomenal. We'll see you in the next video.